Good morning. We apologize for the delay and the technical difficulties. We will try and get the words up on the screen, but they might be a little bit tough. For any hymns that have hymn numbers in the bulletin, we have hymnals now, so you can look at the words there if you need to. We welcome everyone who is worshiping with us today. Let us take a minute to stand up, turn to your neighbor, and say, peace be with you. You can receive a printable order of service for next week's worship service by emailing a request to whitenprez at gmail.com. For anyone who would like to help hearing the service, hearing devices are available on the table in the gathering area. At the end of the service, please place them back on the table, but do not put them back in the bag so that we know which aids need to be cleaned before the next service. Due to COVID, all microphones and hearing devices are disinfected between services. There are children's bulletins available on the Welcome Center desk. The bulletins contain various activities, and there are bulletins available for various age ranges. Now I want to call your attention to some important announcements. A big thank you to all the trustees and volunteers for the wonderful job they did at yesterday's spring cleanup. The grounds look lovely. A special Pentecost service will be held at 1 p.m. this afternoon. The theme is the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. A light lunch will be served by the Catherine M. Houston Mission Circle between the two services. We ask that you pick up individually prepackaged food in the back in the gathering area and enjoy eating outside. Trash bins are located at the entrance and exit doors. If you are a visitor, you are invited to stay for this additional service. We will have some very special guests. A special offering will be taken up today to benefit our missionaries. Please designate contributions by writing missions on your check or offering envelope. Commitment Sunday is June 6th. If you did not receive financial and time talent pledge cards in the mail this week, more cards are available at the welcome desk. As is true for us individually, so it is true for the church. Costs are rising. Please prayfully consider how you might be able to increase your financial pledge. Even small amounts each month can add up to large amounts for the year. The Saturday morning discipleship group, which is using Becoming a Contagious Christian, took a personality test so each person could learn what his or her personal style is for spreading God's word. Copies of the test are available at the welcome desk, or you can receive a copy by email by contacting, contacting Leslie Reichert. Please see your bulletin for contact information. The Christian Growth and Nurture Committee is looking for someone to help the church organize some fellowship events as we return to normal after the pandemic. If you like to eat, have fun, and enjoy fellowship, please check off that item on the Time Talent Pledge Card that you received in the mail or contact the church office. Extra Time Talent Cards are available at the Welcome Center at the front entrance. Gay McRae and Harriet Platt are each having garage sales next Saturday, May 29th, with the proceeds going to the church and to Piece of Bread. For more information, contact Gay McRae or Harriet Platt. Please note the reported giving for April on the bulletin insert. We are still below the giving level needed to fund all the church programs adequately. We close out the fiscal year at the end of the month, and any additional contributions you, could, you would like to make are greatly appreciated. 
Please see your bulletin for additional announcements. And please stay seated to sing our introit, Spirit of the Living God. Please join me in reading the call to worship responsibly. The call to worship is from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Please stand for our opening hymn, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. as you are to worship, come just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow, still the greatest treasure remains for the who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. Dear
Jesus came to earth that our sin might be forgiven so that we could reconcile with God. We say we have not sinned. To say we have not sinned is to render Jesus' sacrifice worthless. Let us go to God and confess our sin, first together and then silently. Almighty and everlasting God, forgive us for our bravado in your presence. Forgive us for failing to take seriously the damage sin causes in our lives. Forgive us for being blind to your sin so that we can justify ourselves. Remove from us all that prevents us from receiving your spirit. Amen. In Jesus, God shows us that God longs to forgive us so that we might enjoy communion with God. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. As forgiven people of God, we in turn forgive each other that we may enjoy communion with each other in Christ. Please stand for the Gloria. The Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, O sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as he, I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophecy to the breath, prophecy, son of man, and say to it. That is what the sovereign Lord says. Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe into the, these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, 
and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I have a word for children. I don't see any children down there. Yes, I do. So this morning, we're celebrating a really special day. We are remembering the day that the Holy Spirit came down to earth, and the Holy Spirit is still with us on earth. But on that particular day, Jesus had told his disciples to wait until they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. I'm sure they didn't have any idea what that meant, but they did what Jesus told them to do, and they waited, and they prayed while they waited. And the day came, all collected together, and the Holy Spirit came in a way that you really couldn't miss. All of a sudden, the place where they were staying, there was this sound, this huge sound, like a really mighty wind, probably like the wind you would hear in a hurricane or a even maybe a tornado, and that sound just filled the place. And they could see tongues of fire above the men's heads. And then those men started to speak in all sorts of different languages. There were all different people there, people from all over the world. And you know, all over the world, there are all sorts of languages. People in different countries speak different languages. And they could each hear what the disciples were saying in their own language. Languages are really important. The very first time that the Old Testament was written, it was written in Hebrew. And in a few minutes, Mr. Thomas is going to read a section of scripture that comes from the Old Testament, and he's going to read it in Hebrew. Not everybody who was there that day spoke Hebrew. Some of them didn't live in that area, so they spoke whatever language was spoken in their areas. Well, that was the Old Testament. The New Testament was originally written in the Greek language. That was the only language that it was written in. And if you look on the screen, you can see what is printed in the Greek New Testament. If you didn't know Greek, you couldn't read that. That is what you're going to hear people reading in a few minutes. And we'll have on the screen what it says in English. But people had to learn different languages so that they could translate the Bible into all languages so that everybody could read and tell the message of Jesus. On that day of Pentecost, those disciples didn't know any other languages. All they knew was their own. And the miracle was that everybody there was able to hear message of Jesus because miraculously God gave those men the ability to speak in all those different languages. God is like that. God gives us what we need to share the message of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be with us, to provide for us the strength and the courage, and the wisdom, and the ability to share your message of love with everybody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, kids.
Thank you, Jimmy. That was beautiful. Let's pray. Lord, it is true that unless you enable us to understand your message, it doesn't matter what language we hear it in. For we need to understand not just the meanings of the words, but the message from you that they communicate. Send forth your spirit into each of us. Help us hear, understand, and know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus told his disciples that they would be witnesses to all the world. That necessitated then, and it necessitates now, the ability to communicate in all sorts of languages. Because as I told the children, the original language for the Old Testament was Hebrew, and the original language for the New Testament was Greek. If you didn't know those two languages, you were sort of stuck. But Jesus said they would speak his gospel message to the whole world. Either people had to learn Greek or Hebrew, or someone else had to learn those languages who could translate them into the languages spoken all over the world. That remains true. Since the Reformation, those manuscripts have continued to be translated into languages around the world, and they continue to this day to be translated. We have a sampling of those languages here with us today, so I invite Jimmy Tobin, Mallory Mercer, and Rhonda and Mark Thomas to come forward and share with me the reading of the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Os etiantes to dons le pernamo, e nesachon capris penser, os etiantes le uns aux autres. Qui vu dire et sisi? Mit autres se mokant et de saint. Os sont plein de vendu. 
Alors Pierre, c'est présentante avec les hommes. Elle va la voir et leur parle et son termes. En mes choses, drifts, et vous tous qui séjournez à Jérusalem, sachez si si et prêtez l'oreille la mes paroles. Ces gens ne sont pas vivre comme vous le supposez, car c'est la fraisonne et du jour. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Baha ya, aha rekin, ashbuk et rua, el kal basar, bani ba banikim, ba banu. Kim Tis K you Kim Hala mute Ya Ya Helm Mon Bahu Rakim Hats Newt Ya Ra Badem Laha Badim Ba all Shuvu Pat Bahut Bamen Ha Ama Ashpuk et Ru'ah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus had told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I wonder what they thought that meant. Probably, possibly, some, but probably not all, of the disciples had seen Jesus baptized and had seen the dove descend upon Jesus at his baptism. baptism. And I wonder if that's what they thought being baptized by the Holy Spirit would be like. In similar fashion, we wonder what promises that Jesus made to us that have yet to be fulfilled will be like when they are fulfilled. For example, his second coming. What do we imagine it's going to be like when Jesus comes back again? If the past is prologue to the future, I suspect it isn't going to be anything at all like what we think it's going to be like. How could the disciples have possibly known or imagine what the Holy Spirit coming to baptize them would be like. No experience they had had with Jesus had been anything like that. Jesus had breathed Holy Spirit into them on the night of his resurrection, but that certainly wasn't anything like what happened that day of Pentecost. Yet, both of those accounts include the same word, pneuma, meaning breath. The breath of God can come gently and softly, or it can come shockingly and powerfully, like it did on Pentecost. But always it comes with life, new life that creates something fresh and new. Physically, the men looked the same as they had looked the night before, but on the inside, they were very different men. They spoke boldly and powerfully the words that God gave them to speak. It's easy sometimes to get all caught up in the shock and awe of that moment when the sound like a mighty wind filled that room and fire entered the scene. It's easy to get caught up in all of that and say that speaking in other languages is the sign that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. 
but that capability alone, that being able to speak in other languages is meaningless without the message that they spoke. Speaking in other languages was not the important element of this baptism. It was the proclamation of the message of Jesus in languages, in words, that these other people could understand and take meaning from. Jesus had told his disciples two things would happen. One, they would be baptized with the Holy Spirit, and two, they would preach the gospel message throughout the entire world. The latter was not possible without the former. You can't speak the gospel to people all over the world if you cannot speak their language. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for the purpose of making someone more holy or a better Christian, nor is it a sign that a person has found special favor with God. Baptism of the Holy Spirit follows being called to a particular mission or ministry. It empowers the person to carry out that call in the manner in which God intends for it to be carried out. Over the years, I have discovered that God does not call people only to simple, easy tasks. God's work is quite often not easy and definitely not simple. It seems there's always something fighting against God's work being successful. Invariably, people discover they cannot do what God has called them to do using human wisdom, strength, skill, and knowledge alone. Certainly that understanding applied to the disciples. They were not college graduates with degrees in foreign languages. Possibly, not all of them could read and write. While fishermen likely were not on the low end of the totem pole economically, I doubt they have the money to go out and hire private language tutors to teach them all the different languages they were going to need to speak that day. Besides, they were grown men and time was of the essence. Jesus' message needed to continue to be spread and not put on hold while 11 men went to language school to learn how to speak in languages that other people could understand. God does not call anyone to a mission or a ministry without providing all that is needed to carry it out. On that celebrated day of Pentecost, God miraculously gave those 11 men the ability to speak in whatever language was needed to communicate the message of Jesus, the risen Messiah, to people gathered there from all over the world. But I think we need to go beyond the Holy Spirit's work within just those 11 men. We need not to limit our focus to the disciples, although the pyrotechnics are indeed awe-inspiring and attention-grabbing. This event 
was not God's way of providing entertainment for this special day with the disciples being the star attraction. God had a job to do, and the disciples were to help get the job done. But like so many of the rest of us, they were tag-alongs. They tagged along with God and were available for God to use. Did they continue to speak other languages for the rest of their lives? The Bible doesn't say. But we can be sure that if God needed them to speak different languages, God gave them the ability to do that. But even just as important, God, by way of the Holy Spirit, gave all of those people present not only the ability to hear the words spoken in their language, but to understand the meaning of those words. Without their ability to understand the meaning and take in the truth of what the disciples were saying, it wouldn't have made any difference what language the disciples spoke. The point is that God empowered them all through the Holy Spirit to communicate and understand the gospel message that day. God did that through the Holy Spirit's presence within them all. God continues to do that. Most ministers and missionaries I know can attest to that. So can many other people called to a vast variety of professions, jobs, and tasks. God opens doors, gives new skills and talents, heals diseases, both physical and mental, and provides resources, miraculously at times, to ensure that we are able to complete successfully whatever God calls us to do. So if you think you've never been baptized by the Holy Spirit, I invite you to think again about that. I invite you to take another look at your life. Perhaps you've not been baptized by the Holy Spirit, but perhaps you have been. Reflect on what you have felt God called you to do that you felt would be impossible for you to do. Recall the obstacles that seemed to come into play and block your ability to carry out that call. And yet, those obstacles just seemed to melt away. Your ability to complete the task God called you to do in spite of those obstacles is a strong indication that the Holy Spirit had empowered you to do that job. It does take a certain amount of faith to put the first step on a new path that God has laid out for you, especially when you have no idea where that path is going to lead. Seeing huge obstacles in the way right from the very beginning is enough to make you to decide you'll just stay put where you are, thank you very much. But when you trust and obey, as an old hymn says, God is faithful to provide all you need even miraculously if the occasion calls for it. The courage, the faith to take that first step boldly comes from the Holy Spirit that cleanses away the darkness that would overshadow faith 
and thwart God's plan. The cleansing and empowering does not create levels or classes of Christians. Rather, it makes it possible for us all. It makes possible the way to be a tag-along with Jesus as he moves throughout the earth, spreading the message of reconciling love. On this day, we not only celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit to be with God's people wherever we go, we also raise our voices in songs of praise and thanksgiving for the work God does within us for the purpose of making us suitable tagalongs with Jesus. But there is something we must always remember, something that Paul told the Christians living in Corinth not too many years after this special day of Pentecost. It's usually not read on Pentecost, but it probably should be. It's a very familiar passage. Some of you may have already thought of what it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 3 begin the passage and summarize the main point. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. The disciples who were the first to be baptized by the Holy Spirit did not go out to preach the gospel as an intellectual task only. They went forth in love, showing in their compassion to others the love that Jesus has for everyone. So must we. And God will give us the language and the words that those to whom God leads us have been prepared to hear, take in, and understand. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. stand and say what we believe using a portion of a brief statement of faith. We trust in God the Holy Spirit everywhere, the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life, 
and the cup of salvation and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. Our next hymn is Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. It's number 240 in your hymnal. seated. Sorry about that. That's 240 in the hymnal I took that out of. I invite Suzanne Centaur to come up for a minute of mission. Suzanne thought I was going to forget it like I did the time before when she was supposed to come. That was an important lesson. I don't forget minutes for mission anymore. Unlike any other. As we reflect on 2020, we realize just how truly special every offering of time, talent, and treasure is. We have been celebrating the mission of this church in the past few weeks. Today is Pentecost Sunday, and we celebrate the work of the Holy Spirit in the world. Jesus told his disciples to go out into the world and preach the gospel to all nations. Our orders have not changed. The mission of this church in Whitenville has carried on for close to 150 years. Because of your generosity, our mission budget can grow and serve both locally, with a piece of bread in the Blackstone Valley Emergency Shelter, and partner with Catherine Houston Mission Circle, nationally and globally. We may not all be goers, but we can be senders. How exciting to be part of God's great plan of salvation for all people. <clears throat> Celebrating this afternoon, is a very special time. We will be celebrating what God is doing through your generous gifts. We are the church together. We are not merely fundraising, but faith raising. We give as devotion, we give as thanks, and we give as one. And faith produces fruit. When we all do a little, it adds up a lot. So today I say thank all of you. To God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. We come now to our time for prayer.
prayers, and we have some prayer requests. We say a prayer of thanks that Jane is back with us this morning, still recovering from knee replacement surgery, but doing well. We keep the family of Ryan DeVries, grandnephew of Jim and Debbie Baker, in our prayers due to Ryan's very sudden death this past week. We join Marilyn in a prayer of thanks and praise that her father-in-law's surgery went well. Um, a small malignant tour, tumor was removed. He seems to be recovering well at the moment. And he sends his thanks for our prayers on his behalf. Gay asks prayers for the family of her best friend, Blanche Kidd, who died this week. And we also keep Gay in our prayers because she is one of Blanche's friends. Let's go to God in prayer. Lord, as we lift these people in our hearts, in our spirits, up to you, we know that long ago you reached down to them with your love and with your hand to support them no matter what. There are times when we lean on that support more than other times. And although we don't thank you for the hardships and the griefs that give us that opportunity, we do thank you for reminding us that in all parts of our lives, we can call on you and you will be there. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have brought to live within each of us that helps us to be what you created us to be. It enables us to be good tagalongs in your work on this earth. It is more than a privilege and an honor to walk with you where you walk on this earth, to follow not just in your footsteps behind you, but sometimes to walk beside you when we feel our hand in yours, when we watch the work that you do and the way that you do it as you teach us how we too may do your work. There is so very much work to do. Your Holy Spirit needs acceptance in every corner of this globe. All of the strife, the hurting, the grief, the anger, the disappointment, the love, the friendship, all of these that we experience need the presence of your Holy Spirit, that they may not just be plain human emotions, but that they may be tools that you use to help us know you better and to help other people come to know you. this day, when we celebrate the coming of your spirit, we ask that your spirit of peace would blanket this earth. We ask that that spirit of peace would fill this sanctuary, this church, this family of faith, this community, our town, our state, our country, that we may indeed bring with you your purpose, the culmination of your kingdom arriving on earth. These things we pray in the name of him who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us turn our hearts and minds now to worshiping God through our tithes and offerings. sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know bear the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings we lift our hands in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. There are blessings you cannot receive till you know him in his fullness and you got to believe you're the one to profit who when you say I'm going to walk with all Jesus all the way sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, oh, we'll lift our hands in praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been when we shall leave this place. If you say you've saved and you're saved from sin, now you're weak and you're bound and you cannot enter in. You can make it right if you will yield oh lord you'll enjoy the holy spirit that we feel oh sweet sweet spirit sweet heavenly dove our hearts in praise without a doubt we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place oh sweet sweet spirit sweet heavenly dove
without a doubt you know that you have been revived when we shall leave this place take these offerings as a token of our love and appreciation for all that you have given to us. Use them and use us as your messengers to spread your word throughout this world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing song really is in our hymnal, 292, God of Grace and God of Glory. As you leave, there is light lunch supplies on the table in the back. You are invited to fill one of the styrofoam containers with the prepackaged items for lunch and then take them outside and enjoy them. You will also find uh, individually packaged beverages. Now, as you leave this place, know that the Holy Spirit goes with you no matter where you are, is within you to empower you to speak boldly and to act boldly on the love of God and the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit go with you now and always. Amen.